whatever last point you wrote, I am continuing from there. Next point. Okay, shall I start? Please write on. If an auditor has taken, if an auditor has taken loan, auditor has taken loan either himself, loan either himself or his partner, either himself or his partner or through his relative or through his relative through his relative into bracket write down not friend not friend not friend then the person is disqualified then the person is disqualified person is disqualified to act as an auditor full stop next point if a person is indebted if a person is indebted either in the holding company either in the holding company or in the subsidiary company in the subsidiary company or in the associate company or in the associate company as on the date of appointment as on the date of appointment then he is disqualified he is disqualified to act as an auditor full stop next point now next point you give the heading definition of relative definition of relative Now you can write the section number in the bracket section number 2 subsection 77 companies act 2013 write down relative means relative means husband and wife Relative means husband and wife or members of HUF or members of HUF. Full stop. Since this definition continue, since this definition, since this definition is not an exclusive one since this definition is not an exclusive one not an exclusive one therefore therefore reference of rule number 4 therefore reference of rule number 4 of the companies see how i have written rule number 4 of the companies specification specification of details of definition rules reference of rule number four of the companies specification of details of definition rules 2014 is taken Two thousand fourteen is taken. Full stop. 
according to these rules continue according to these rules following people are deemed to be relatives following people are deemed to be relatives number 1 father including step father second mother including step mother son and son's wife next one daughter and daughter's husband next one stepson step daughter stepson step daughter steps and step daughter means including their wives and husbands also steps and step daughter including their wives and husband respectively next one grandson granddaughter grandson granddaughter including the step relation including the step relation next one grandfather grandmother grandfather grandmother including the step relation next one brother brother brother's wife and in bracket you will write step brother step brother's wife both can have the same wife <laughs> sister sister's husband step sister step sister's husband i can listen some people talking if i'll catch anyone i'll ask that person to leave the class i'm just watching from here anyone i caught that person will not attend the lectures now because it's too much i am dictating a provision i have to think before dictating you are just talking have you written so much next main point next main point if a person if a person holds if a person holds securities in a company if a person holds securities in a company having voting rights having voting rights either himself either himself or his partner or his partner or his relative or his relative then the person is disqualified
then the person is disqualified to act as an auditor person is disqualified to act as an auditor full stop next point if a person himself if a person himself or through his partner or through his partner holds securities holds securities in a company of any face value of any face value please underline any face value then the person is disqualified of any face value then the person is disqualified person is disqualified to act as an auditor to act as an auditor full stop however however if the relative however if the relative of that person if the relative of that person holds securities if the relative of that person holds securities exceeding rupees 1 lakh exceeding rupees 1 lakh exceeding rupees 1 lakh in terms of face value exceeding rupees 1 lakh in terms of face value then the person is disqualified then the person is disqualified to act as an auditor is disqualified to act as an auditor full stop next point the limit of rupees 1 lakh the limit of rupees 1 lakh of rupees 1 lakh is seen for the relative is seen for the relative for the relative not for not for the person himself not for the person himself or his partner not for the person himself or his partner full stop next point what matters here is the face value what matters here is the face value is the face value not the not the market value full stop next point if the market value of security if the market value of security which is held by a relative which is held by a relative is 10 crore rupees is 10 crore rupees but its face value is less than rupees 1 lakh its face value is less than rupees 1 lakh then the person is qualified to act as an auditor then the person is qualified to act as an auditor full stop 
if a person himself if a person himself or his partner if a person himself or his partner or his relative or his relative holds securities holds securities in the holding company in the holding company or in the subsidiary company in the subsidiary company or in the associate company or in the associate company then all the holdings will be cumulated all the holdings will be cumulated to consider disqualification all the holdings will be cumulated to consider disqualification next point if a person becomes if a person becomes insolvent person becomes insolvent or of unsound mind or of unsound mind or is convicted by or is convicted by convicted by the court of law the court of law for any offense for any offense then the person is disqualified for any offense then the person is disqualified disqualified to act as an auditor to act as an auditor in a bracket write a note small note as per section 8 as per section 8 of the chartered accountants act as per section number 8 of the chartered accountants act 1949 chartered accountants act 1949 if a person is a ca if a person is a ca who has not completed who has not completed 21 years 21 years of his age then the person is disqualified then the person is disqualified to become member of icai to become member of icai and he cannot be appointed as a company auditor he cannot be appointed as a company auditor close the bracket so this completes your only one section what is that section 141 now you can give the heading 139 section <coughs> section number 139 of companies act 2013 the name of this section is appointment and rotation of auditors appointment and rotation of auditors appointment and rotation
write down first point the concept of the concept of compulsory rotation first point under this section the concept of compulsory rotation concept of compulsory rotation is a new concept is a new concept which has which has been expected to change which has been expected to change the indian audit market structure expected to change the indian audit market structure indian audit market structure significantly significantly especially for especially for several large companies especially for several large companies several large companies who have retained their auditors who have retained retained their auditors for several years retain their auditors for several years full stop next point an ordinary resolution is passed an ordinary resolution is passed by the shareholders ordinary resolution is passed by the shareholders to appoint auditors at the annual general meeting to appoint auditors at the annual general meeting next point under section 224 under section 224 of the 1956 act under section 224 of the 1956 act auditors were appointed auditors were appointed from the conclusion of first agm from the conclusion of first agm till the conclusion of till the conclusion of subsequent agm till the conclusion of subsequent agm subsequent means the next one the next age year that is that is their tenure was that is their tenure was for their tenure was for one year tenure was for one year full stop next point under section 139 under section 139 of the companies act 2013 under section 139 of the companies act 2013 auditors will be appointed auditors will be appointed for a tenure of for a tenure of 5 consecutive years 5 consecutive years for a tenure of 5 consecutive years please underline this 5 consecutive years full stop it means that continue it means that
auditors will be appointed auditors will be appointed from the conclusion of the first AGM from the conclusion of the first AGM till the conclusion of till the conclusion of the sixth AGM important point from the conclusion of the first AGM till the conclusion of sixth AGM subject to subject to the ratification subject to the ratification given by shareholders subject to the ratification given by shareholders full stop the shareholders at every AGM continue the shareholders at every AGM shall ratify shall ratify the continuity of auditors shall ratify the continuity of auditors so if the shareholders do not ratify so if the shareholders do not ratify his services do not ratify his services then then an auditor will discontinue then an auditor will discontinue before completion of five years before completion of five years full stop these provisions same point continue these provisions shall be applicable these provisions shall be applicable if a person is an individual or a sole auditor these provisions shall be applicable if a person is an individual or a sole auditor next point in case of in case of form of chartered accountants in case of form of chartered accountants now into, into bracket please write down including LLP including LLP in case of form of chartered accountants the tenure of an auditor the tenure of an auditor under under the 2013 act under the 2013 act will be from the conclusion of first AGM will be from the conclusion of first AGM till the conclusion of till the conclusion of 11th AGM Please unline this 11th AGM. Conclusion of the first AGM till the conclusion of 11th AGM. 11th AGM. Subject to the ratification. Subject to the ratification. Ratification given by shareholders. Given by shareholders. at every AGM given by shareholders at every AGM full stop 
10 years continue 10 years will be calculated 10 years will be calculated as a period of as a period of two consecutive five years 10 years will be calculated as a period of two consecutive five years very important point two consecutive five years full stop it means that it means that it is not at all necessary it is not at all necessary that a form that a form will remain in office that a firm will remain in office will remain in office for both the periods for both the periods as it may be removed as it may be removed it may be removed after the completion of first five years only it may be removed after the completion of first five years only next point According to the concept of rotation, next point, according to the concept of rotation, after completion of, according to the concept of rotation, after completion of 5 years or 10 years, after completion of 5 years or 10 years. 5 years is for individual, 10 is for firm. Completion of 5 years or 10 years. As the case may be, as the case may be, the auditor will rotate, the auditor will rotate and a new auditor will be appointed the auditor will rotate and a new auditor will be appointed new auditor will be appointed full stop next point there is a cooling off period there is a cooling off period For five years, there is a cooling off period for five years, which is applicable to an individual, which is applicable to an individual as well as the audit firm, as well as the audit firm. which means that which means that the individual which means that the individual or or an audit firm which means that an individual or an audit firm cannot be appointed cannot be appointed as an auditor cannot be appointed as an auditor as an auditor in the cooling off period in the cooling off period in the same company please underline same company in the same company 
where he acted as an auditor in the same company where he acted as an auditor full stop however however he can be appointed as an auditor however he can be appointed as an auditor appointed as an auditor in a different company in a different company which is not a related company please underline which is not a related company now you all know what's a related company it's a subsidiary or an associate company which is not a related company now one more thing here let's talk about firms rotation so what we are discussing is if a firm is appointed as an auditor firms rotation and transition firms rotation and transition now you already know that the rotation period is 5 years transition period is 3 years this is 3 years minimum it can't go below 3 years in any case please remember that it can't be 2 years or 1 year tell me one thing if on uh, 31st of march 2014 if the firm is already an auditor firm is already an auditor and here's the new company law with effect from 1st of april 2014 these are some examples if a firm is already an auditor for 13 years let's take 13 years what is the answer 3 years. years rotation and uh, the total total will be 16 years very easy if on 1st of uh, if on 31st of march 2014 the firm was an auditor say for 5 years i should i write 3 or 5 3 or 5 like 5 years i'm not understanding the concept total period is how much for firm total period is not 5 total period is 10 years that is why here it is 10 years it can't go below 10 years here please remember if it is 4 years then 6 years it can't go below 10 if it is 1 year then Have you understood? Yes, sir. Ten years. Look at this chart. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll show you that one also. Pura paisa vasool hoega. Look here. Shh. Shh. Ten years. Three years transition. Thirteen years. Nine years. Three years transition. Twelve. once it reaches the 10 that means if it is 6 years already working 4 years i did i write 3 years here because 3 is the minimum okay but it can go beyond 3 it can't go below 3 so it's 10 years now you see everywhere it's 10 years so if it is 1 year it has to be 9 years total 10 years this is a chart in case of firm why because the firm's eligibility is for how many years 10 years, 10 years. so after 10 years the firm rotates that means from the agm number 1 till agm number 11 have you understood or not now you can copy this chart this is more clear you can copy this properly so any number of years let them give you you know how to calculate transition and rotation now
Have you finished copying? So this is also the same chart. If you feel like copying this, you can copy, but it's all, always the same chart only which I have showed you. So this is one thing which I want to say. Now let's take an example. Let's take an example. Suppose X Limited, X Limited is a company where Messrs P, Q, R and Associates were appointed as auditors. This P, Q, R and Associates are practicing CAs who are appointed as auditors. And they were validly appointed at the first AGM, AGM 1 conclusion of first AGM. Now the provision of company law section number 139 says that their tenure will continue till the conclusion of 11th AGM. You should write this always in exam. Section number 139 also says that a shareholder has to pass ordinary resolution to appoint the firm. It so happened that Mr. P Mr. P was appointed as an auditor. Though the firm is appointed as an auditor, but all the three partners don't come and do audit of X. Only one partner will do. So Mr. P was doing audit of X. Mr. P, after he completed three years, after he completed three years, shareholders did not like his service. Mr. P, after he completed three years, shareholders did not like his service. Tell me, can Mr. Q, can Mr. PQR, so Mr. Q, for how many years he will continue his office? This firm was appointed as an auditor. Shh, peacefully understand the question. Firm was appointed as an auditor, OR was passed. After Mr. P completed three years, shareholders did not like him. So shareholders said that we are ratifying form but we are not ratifying Mr. P. Mr. P's services are not up to the mark so we want either Q or R to come. So now what to do? Let us say Q. Q will do audit for how many years? Now I can't even say that you don't think only because it's a new provision but you should have thought. See can I say partner is same as an individual only? Tell me if Mr. P was a sorry if Mr. Q was a part uh, was an individual if Mr. Q was an individual if he would have his own sole proprietary concern his period will be for don't you think that the same five years should be even given when he is a partner or should he be doing audit for seven years because partner and individual both are same it means that if Mr. Q, Mr. Q is appointed by shareholders, his period cannot be beyond five years. That means, sir, now even two more years are left. Now what to do? Because you said for firm it is ten years. Mr. P did audit for three. Mr. Q, if you are saying five, then two more years are left here. Now if the shareholders want Mr. P to come back again to do audit for these two years, he can. If the shareholders don't want him to come back then for two years R can. Now now I will not tell you that for R again you will start five years. What will happen you know after every four years completion one partner will say I don't want to work. Call other partner. So four plus four plus four it will exceed ten years. It will become how many years? Then you will violate the company law concept. Because this the 10 year concept is applicable not for partners, it is applicable for the whole firm. Tomorrow if a firm has 10 partners starting from P to Z, in between there are 8 partners more. Now every partner will say after 4 years, okay I'll stop, 4, 4. Likewise the firm will continue up to 40 years then. What is the point of getting this 10 year provision? Are you understanding my point? It means what? That the 10 year provision is applicable in case of the whole firm. The firm has to go after completing 10 years. Who does audit in between? That is not our concern. Anybody, anybody, any partner can do audit. That is not our concern. But if a partner is doing audit, then his tenure cannot exceed. 
and the overall period of firm cannot exceed 10 years. I was just watching in the break time nobody asked me this question that sir if one partner is a individual then you said five years but you, you are asking me questions which were very easy like you know just made question but nobody asked me this question that sir when I am talking about a partner and individual this is an intelligent question to ask individual has five years partner is also an individual only can you deny that fact you can't partner is also an individual only that means what that in case of firm the overall limit is 10 years and in case of individual the overall limit is five years so if a partner of a firm is an individual which he is then his limit will be also five years only have you understood or not going by this background going by this background if I ask you the answer to this question here the answer will be P completed 3, Q can do 5 years maximum and then R will do the remaining 2 years after which the form will be only rotated. So R cannot say that okay I will do 5 years and then the form gets rotated and then P will also say okay okay shareholders you, you know I am sorry you will like my services now he will start crying and then you know shareholders will appoint you nothing like that no, nobody is going to see your tears once you complete 10 years you are out of the service. So it is irrelevant how many partners are there who is doing what ultimately for the form it has to be 10 years for an individual it has to be 5 years you should not forget this point have you understood or not in between a firm may have so many partners so many individuals it is not the matter of concern of company law if I tell you that a b and company is appointed as an auditor and there is one more firm p q and company. A did audit for 5 years, then B did audit for 5 years, when B reached the 4th year of his audit service in a company, say X limited, A wanted to resign from this firm, that means A wanted this firm to dissolve and A wanted to join this firm. After he finished his 5 years and B is finishing 4th year now, he is going in the 5th year of his service, he wants to join this firm. That means he will join this firm, A, P, Q and company, will new, new firm will be formed. Now this firm will have 10 years of 10 years and since A knows X limited properly, P, Q will say I will get one more client here. It will add to my portfolio, the client will come in my portfolio, B will be just somewhere else you know B is not uh, A, they both want to dissolve the firm and see the smartness when this person he has completed his five years when the B is about to complete the fifth year he is in the fourth year he is wanting to dissolve the firm that means if he joins this firm what will happen again X limited may appoint him as an auditor for five years that means this person is taking double benefit plus he is getting the client also and plus this firm will immediately get a new client Likewise, this person can do, this is called as not tax planning, people say this is audit planning. Chartered accountants are very good in doing these activities only. Company law is even better than chartered accountant. What is company law saying? That suppose if a person wants to dissolve the firm after he has completed his tenure but a partner is still doing audit, no new firm will take him as an auditor, <laughs> as a partner. So suppose if this firm takes him, suppose the firm takes him, then suppose if B would have completed his fourth year, can I say the cooling off period for five years would be applying to this firm? But since this firm got dissolved, now the cooling off will apply to this firm. Before becoming auditor only the cooling off started applying. Why? Because A was introduced in this firm. So when A joins this firm, whatever cooling off is applicable to this firm will also be applicable to this firm. Even if this firm has not done audit even for a single year. So you know automatically these partners they will kick out A, go I don't want you because if you come in I will not be able to get the audit. Are you understanding this? So cooling off period does not only applies after the completion of tenure, it can even apply before the completion of tenure to a prospective audit firm. Have you understood or not? So whenever a person leaves the organization and goes and joins other company, the same cooling off applies to this company also. So if a, B and company both have successfully say completed 10 years, 5 plus 5. Then if A wants to go in A, P, Q and form a new company, A, P, Q and company. So if suppose after 10 years, if this firm and suppose this is not dissolved, it is, so A wants to become partner in 2, 2, here also, here also. It is possible. It is possible. But this, these two partners won't take you only. 
because they know that if you come in you may get a client but they can audit that client only after five years not before that so instead of taking you they will themselves go and become the auditors have you understood or not what i'm trying to tell you all that cooling off does not applies only to the existing audit firm it may even apply to the new audit firm so that is why these people will restrain you from acting as an auditor in short in short you should not belong to the same network if you belong to the same network people are not going to take you in if they take you in they are fools because they will not be getting the audits then audits of which company of that same company which you were auditing so many years they will definitely get new audits but they won't get audit of this company so if you belong to the same network of auditors you won't be eligible for this type of audit i'll be giving you all the points in writing but first you understand my examples you know under the brand name of deloitte's there are two audit firms working deloitte as i told you is a big brand name there are so many partners under this firm there are two audit firms working a b and company and p q r and company two audit firms working under the brand name of deloitte's now x limited appointed a b and company as an auditor under the brand name of deloitte so when suppose if a b and company will sign also they will write for deloitte's haskins and sells for Deloitte's and company they will not write their name because they are acquired by Deloitte's as I told you Deloitte's will now start acquiring small small firms so when they will write their audit report but they will write their name only Mr. A partner he is a partner of Deloitte so now ABN company and PQRN company both of them sir both of them these are which type of firms these both of them are associate firms what do you mean by associate firms those firms are associated when they work under the same brand name. So if Deloitte is a brand name, all the firms working under the brand name of Deloitte are called as which firms? Associate, Associate firms. Business partners. Now, X Limited, they complete, this ABN company completed 10 years with X Limited. Can PQRN company be appointed as an auditor from the 11th year onwards? Answer is no. Just like I showed you, there is a same network. Here there is not only same network, but there is same brand also so if you are belonging to the same brand or if you're belonging to the same network you can't be appointed as auditors have you understood or not these are so many inner views complexities when you are taking audit so now sir what will happen then what will happen then any in any case Deloitte has to wait for now five years until it again becomes eligible so after five years it may either send ABN company once again or it may send the associate firm PQR and company have you understood or not so if ABN company are doing audits under the brand name of a firm, then the brand name or same network will be considered here before taking you as a new auditor for the next period. You know now what will happen? If Deloitte's, if Deloitte's is a brand and it had partners, associate partners firm, ABN company and PQRN company. After completing 10 years, after completing 10 years of being auditing X Limited and they are signing in the brand name of Deloitte's only. Always in the balance sheet they used to write for Deloitte's and company. They never used to write their brand name. Though they had a firm name but they never used that name. After 10 years, after 10 years, this firm, this audit firm, it splits from Deloitte's. Split, parted away. Now Deloitte's is only having... PQRN company not this one it splits once it splitted then X limited did not approach Deloitte because they were very happy with ABN company X limited approached ABN company to become auditor after 10 years so can ABN company do the audit because they were working with Deloitte they were already doing audit so can ABN company do the audit of X limited if they have splitted now from the Deloitte's. Now see why I, I give you hint also that they were signing in the name of Deloitte's. So when they are signing in the name of Deloitte, it is as good as Deloitte's doing the audit. It not ABN company. Please understand. It is as good as Deloitte doing the audit, not ABN company. So here ABN company can act as an auditor. Because now they will be signing in the name of ABN company. 
have you understood or not we will write all statements on all these points but first my example should be clear to you if you are working in the same brand name then if you split from that brand name then your individuality is not lost because now you can be the auditor for the same brand now I want to tell you one more thing here if you have got this example Deloitte's and company is a brand name firm and Deloitte's and company is an associate firm with KPMG these both are associate I have told you associate means of the same that means they actually have a same brand but they are associate Deloitte itself is such a powerful brand KPMG is another powerful brand and they together have formed a super powerful brand now within Deloitte's there is AB and company and PQR and company and within KPMG there is say KPMG and company I'll write here XYZ because then you'll say P is a common partner now what happened after AB and company completed 10 years KPMG wanted to split from Deloitte no I don't want I have a standalone identity I don't want you so then AB and company who was auditing X limited for 10 years under the brand name of Deloitte's and Deloitte's and KPMG both are associate firms AB and company wanted to join KPMG and company and wanted to work under its brand name now now when X limited balance sheets were signed it was signed in the name of Deloitte's and KPMG and company as a brand but after 10 years this company they both got splitted Deloitte and KPMG and AB and company wanted to leave Deloitte it is currently happening now when you when I'll tell you the inside story recently just four five days back there was a case in KPMG and company one of the senior partners is leaving the company now he's finding his own he's forming his own audit firm and he's taking away some of his partners with, with him who are working with KPMG it's happening the practical case happening so this ABN company also wanted to part away from Deloitte and Deloitte and KPMG also wanted to split now because everybody wants their own individual identity at the highest level so ABN company since they did audit KPMG and company gave them an offer you come and join us and then we will do audit of X limited so if ABN company joins KPMG and company after their demerger takes place and a co demerger takes place here can this company joining this can KPMG become an auditor of X answer will be no if you have understood the earlier case have you understood or not again you are though you are not in the same brand now but you are in the same network you are look at two things either same network or same brand so if you are in the same brand or in the same network then you are disqualified sir what is the answer if instead of ABN company parting away from Deloitte XYZ and company wanted to join KPMG and company even XY and company will be disqualified because this brand was same look here Deloitte and KPMG and company so AB and company example is a network example whereas PQR and XYZ and company is a brand example are you understanding or not so whether you are in the network or in the same brand name you will be disqualified to act as an auditor so please remember one thing please remember one thing what is the moral of the whole story after learning so many example if you are in the same brand or if you are belonging to the same network if you're belonging to the same network then you will be disqualified to act as an auditor so you should be careful that means if you do the <coughs> look at me if you do the signature in your name then you cannot be qualified but if you are the partner and doing signature in your brand name then you are qualified to act as an auditor but provided if you go and join the brand name which is a co-brand of the the original brand then again you will be disqualified so think over before before writing the answer ultimately in the you know module revision paper study the practice manual they have just written these two words but these two words have a deep meaning inside so if you belong to the same brand or the same network then you cannot so if you start your own firms now then in that case you can start your own by person of KPMG I'm, I'm telling you he's leaving KP and he's a very senior auditor he's working with KPMG in more than 15 years suddenly he's leaving KPMG good KPMG will fall now because a big auditor is going they troubled me also a lot so now if this person is leaving what will happen now he will form his own audit firm 
when he will form his own audit firm all the clients of kpmg will now run to this person because he was signing in the brand of kpmg now he will be signing in his own name he can do that now have you understood or not so basically speaking look at the same brand and the same network and if the partner dissolves the firm then in case of dissolution if he joins the new firm then the new firm should also be applicable for the cooling off period so cooling off period which was applicable to this firm shall also apply to the new firm have you understood or not just few examples i will make you write please write down so next point whatever points you wrote next point the cooling off period ha huh. what happened no no transition i have not given okay i'll give you transition first okay tra three year transition point i have not given first you write that then i'll give you cooling off in fact cooling off i have given but more explanation right there there is a transition period next point there is a transition period transition period of 3 years which will apply with effect from which will apply with effect from 1st of april with effect from 1st of april 2014 full stop this will help this will help this will help the audit firms to find prospective clients to find prospective clients and it will also help it will also help companies it will also help companies to find prospective auditors to find prospective auditors full stop the calculation of transition period the calculation of transition period transition period is shown above i think we have written two tables that is transition period the calculation of transition period is shown above full stop next point the cooling off period the cooling off period is applicable the cooling off period is applicable to an existing audit firm to an existing audit firm and if any partner and if any partner resigns resigns or dissolves resigns or dissolves or join hands with or join hands with another audit firm another audit firm then the concept of cooling off then the concept of cooling off shall apply to concept of cooling off shall apply to another audit firm for example for example if messers abn company messers abn company were the auditors of x limited messers abn company were the auditors of x limited which has completed 10 years which has completed 10 years
then upon completion of 10 years then upon completion of 10 years Messrs APQN company Messrs APQN company cannot be appointed as an auditor cannot be appointed as an auditor since mr a is the common partner since mr a mr a is the common partner full stop the new form apq the new form apq shall wait for 5 years shall wait for 5 years due to the concept of cooling off shall wait for 5 years due to the concept of cooling off full stop next point if a person belongs to if a person belongs to the same network please underline this word person belongs to the same network or same network or the same brand name the same brand name then the firms to which then the firms to which he is an auditor firms to which he is an auditor he is an auditor cannot be appointed cannot be appointed till the completion of cooling off period cannot be appointed till the completion of cooling off period full stop the last point that you wrote is very important point imp please mark it important now is the section 139 over no it not not yet i have discussed only rotation i think we made the heading appointment and rotation appointment is still pending now sir after so much discussion still it is pending yes i want you to give a subheading appointment of auditors rotation part is over section 139 rotation part is over now you give the heading appointment of auditors and just copy this small chart please Okay, have you copied it? It's such a small chart.
Have you copied this chart? The earlier chart you have copied, no? Please write fast. Okay, please pay attention. Now, suppose if I'm appointing an auditor, I'll have to pass an ordinary resolution. If I'm appointing an auditor, I'll have to pass an ordinary resolution. But now, there are multiple cases of auditor's appointment. So far, we are only discussing that whenever an auditors are appointed, it is the shareholders who make the appointment. But this condition holds good to certain extent. Like I will say the certain extent could be 90% times only the shareholders make the appointment. But there are certain possibilities here where even board of directors can appoint auditors. There are possibilities here where Comptroller and Auditor General can also appoint the auditors. Okay, how do you pronounce this word CAG? CAG stands for Comptroller and Auditor General. Please maintain silence. So there are possibilities that board of directors and CAG, in some possibilities, these people can also appoint the auditors. Now I will tell you how these possibilities come in. If suppose, if suppose an auditor has to be appointed, suppose if an auditor has to be appointed in the first annual general meeting, we all know that his tenure will be from the conclusion of the first AGM till the completion of 6th or 11th AGM as the case may be. 6th <coughs> if he is an individual, 11th if he, it's a firm. Now suppose if I tell you that this age, in the AGM the auditor is appointed, what is the duration in which AGMs are conducted? Now suppose 
normally people know sir agm means annual general meeting so annual general meeting is should be conducted once only everybody will say annual general meeting should be conducted once only but company law says no it is not once it is at least once it is not once it is at least once what do you mean by at least once at least once means means it is more than equal to one or one year that means suppose two years agm can also be held in one year only how is that possible sir when i am saying annual general meeting by the name itself we can make out that annual general meeting should be conducted once now since you are saying at least once give some example give some example the possibility to conduct an agm the possibility to conduct an agm is at least once it means that agm should be conducted once in a year but suppose if i say the responsibility to conduct agm the responsibility to conduct agm is not of the shareholder nor of the auditor the responsibility is on the board of directors it is the board of directors who will decide when to conduct agm in fact they are responsible for conducting the agm now what i am trying to tell you all here is that when the board of directors have the possibility to conduct agm they have the responsibility to conduct agm if suppose they become negligent of their responsibilities negligent means what the board of directors become careless they don't bother only whether agm is conducted or not now what to do so in one year in year number 1 they became careless they did not conducted agm so agm could not be conducted this year agm is still pending to be conducted now this year agm can be conducted in the second year so in second year you will conduct the second year agm also plus you will conduct the first year agm also that means in second year i cannot say that agm is conducted once in a year it is conducted conducted one for the last year and conducted one for the current year do you know that for conducting both the agm you can give the same notice to the shareholders the same notice will specify and you know the notice is always given along with the annual report that day i was telling you what are the components of annual report so i told you that along with the annual report what will the shareholders be given the shareholders will be given notice of agm what i mean to say here is that in the second year you can discuss transactions of the second year agm plus the transactions of the agm which is not conducted in the year one that means in the second year there are how many agms going to be conducted two agms have you understood or not before i go into the details of the provisions which you have copied the charts which you have made first i want to tell you what are the types of agm like there is no uh, i will not say that agm is conducted once only in the year it is at least once in a year so in in a year you can have 1 2 3 4 agms also now i was explaining you that the tenure of an auditor as per the 1956 act will be from the conclusion of the agm till the conclusion of the next agm till the conclusion of the second agm now tell me when it is conclusion of agm 1 to conclusion of agm 2 suppose if this agm did not concluded in year number 2 it concluded in year number 4 that means second year they, they did not conduct agm careless directors third year also they did not conduct agm and in the fourth year now they are conducting agm do you know that in the fourth year they will not only be conducting agm of the fourth year but they'll also conduct agm of the second year as well as the third year have you understood or not that means in the fourth year you will have three three agms one of this year one of the last year and one of last to last year so there will be how many agms conducted three agm so now an auditor who was supposed to resign here will continue his tenure up to this place why because his tenure is till the conclusion of the next agm but the next agm should conclude and when did it conclude it concluded after 2 years so till that time this person continues to be acting as an auditor so if mr a was appointed as an auditor in agm number 2014 for the year 2014 then his tenure will be concluded according to this example which i gave you not in 2014 but in 2000 16 because in 2014 so 2015 they did not keep an agm 2016 also they did not keep an agm in fact in 2017 he will be resuming from the office that means he'll go out from the office so 
in this was 1956 what i used to teach to the 1956 students now you are not in 1956 you are covered by 2013 for for your complexities are even more but first you understand 1956 what it used to say it used to say that if an agm is not concluded in the next year then the auditor can presume his office then the auditor can presume his office for the next year also for the next to next year henceforth he can presume his office so long as the agm is conducted but this was the case uh, in 1956 act where the auditor can presume his office sir what about 2013 which is going to come in our exam now in 2013 we have let's take a case of an individual we all know that individual and firm there is a variation so let's take an individual's case if i say that in case of individual his tenure will be from the conclusion of the first agm till the conclusion of the sixth agm till the conclusion of the sixth agm you tell me one thing if i am not conducting agm 2 agm 2 in the next year the shareholder will not be able to ratify his tenure he will have to assume that he is the auditor next year also he can't do anything now because it was not his mistake of not conducting agm it is a mistake of the board of directors because the responsibility of conducting agm is in the hands of board of directors not in the hands of auditors so auditor what he will do he will presume his office for this period he will presume his office for the third AGM also, for the fourth AGM also. So long if the AGM is not conducted, he will keep on presuming his office. Sir, if the AGM is not conducted, can you file the balance sheet with the ROC? Because if the AGM is only not conducted, so ROC will only accept audited balance sheet. And he will only accept the balance sheet which will be read out which will be read out by the auditor. Can I say that the auditor has to read out the balance sheet in front of the shareholders in the AGM? He will take out the balance sheet, he will take out his audit report, he will take out other relevant data and he will read out why he is giving true and fair view. He will explain to the shareholders, see the gross profit, see the net profit. See there is a variation between the director's report and the, uh, the gross profit shown by the profit and loss account. I think I told you, 16%, 18%. Everything he will make understand to the shareholder in the AGM when he will read out the points. But for reading, the AGM should be conducted. The AGM was not conducted. So now ROC will say that don't worry. Just let me know whether you audited the balance sheet or not. Auditor said that I audited the balance sheet, but AGM was not conducted. So ROC said it is okay. The registrar will say, the registrar will say, it is okay if there is AGM not conducted. Don't worry. You give me the audited balance sheet and whenever your AGM gets conducted, that time you read the balance sheet. So even if the AGM is not conducted, that does not deny the company from filing its financial statement with the ROC. With ROC, you will always file the financial statement so long it is an audited financial statement. Once it is audited, ROC is not concerned whether you conduct AGM or not. Yes, but then the company has to make it sure that it conducts AGM because, you know, in company law, if the directors don't conduct AGM within a reasonable time period, they will be disqualified to act as a director of the company. So the disqualifications will come on the director. So they are scared of that disqualification because of which they conduct AGM. I think I told you all also that it is the directors who have to give answers to the shareholders in the AGM. So because of the, you know, the fear factor to answer to the shareholders, they take some time to do preparation work so that how they can smartly fool the shareholders. Okay. So sometimes they don't conduct AGMs only. So now if they are not conducting AGM, the company law says that you will be disqualified. Of course, reasons will be seen. If the director said that I was outside India, I was not present, I have genuine grounds of not conducting AGM, then you can't disqualify the director. So reasons will be practically I'm telling you books are not telling all this point practically if a director is not conducting agm then reasons will be found out the roc will send his inspectors they will do inspection to find out the reason why the agm was not conducted so if the agm is not conducted then the director stands to lose his office if there was not a genuine reason so in short roc will say give me the audited balance sheet you can conduct agm later in the next year you read the accounts and what will the auditor do he will presume his office till the agm gets conducted because by the definition the period of the auditor will be from the conclusion of the AGM till the conclusion of the next AGM. Have you understood or not? So in simple terms, what I am trying to tell you all is that if an auditor presumes his tenure, he cannot be held as a defaulter because it is not the responsibility of the auditor to conduct AGM. It is the responsibility of the board of directors. Have you understood or not? 
before I am taking you inside these points, you know, this is the complicated point to understand unless you don't have the grip of all these points. So what points you have copied, it will still take some time for me to create a background. How do you understand that chart which you have copied? So first thing, what I have told you, what is the moral of the story? That if AGM is to be conducted, it has to be conducted at least once. Please remember this point. AGM has to be conducted, it is to be conducted at least once. If AGM is to be conducted, it is whose responsibility to conduct AGM? So responsibility is on the board of directors. Please remember this point. If the AGM is not conducted, if the AGM is not conducted, can the auditor presume his tenure? Yes. Auditor can presume his tenure. Auditor can presume his tenure. Have you understood or not? These are all the... The, the short point which I am deriving from the thing which I have explained to you. AGM should be conducted once. It is the responsibility of the board of directors. AGM is not conducted. Auditor can presume his tenure. Is it clear or not? Now, if I am saying that if I have to conduct an AGM, if I am saying that if I have to conduct an AGM here, let me tell you one thing more. That AGM, that AGM when it is conducted, suppose an AGM was validly conducted. Let's take an example. AGM was validly conducted but what happened what happened the notice which was given to the shareholders that we are going to change our auditors suppose AGM is conducted in the year in which auditors tenure is completing the sixth AGM that means the five years are over now so AGM was validly complete conducted here and who conducts AGM the board of directors so they validly conducted AGM Notice to the shareholder said that now we are going to appoint Mr. B and we are going to remove Mr. A as an auditor. Mr. A is the old auditor who is already doing audit. Mr. B is a new auditor who is going to come. Just, just two days before. Now two days is not a time limit. It can be three days also. Just two days before AGM. Just two days before AGM. Mr. B. Just two days before AGM. Mr. B died. Oh my God. Unfortunately he died. Okay, in a road accident he died. So, just two days before conducting the AGM, Mr. B died. Now what to do? Now can Mr. A presume his office? See, I told you that if AGM is not conducted, the existing auditor can presume his office. But you tell me, if AGM is conducted, but two days before the AGM, the notice was speaking to appoint Mr. B, but now Mr. B died unfortunately. Now can Mr. A presume his office? Answer will be no he can't. That means if he has to presume his office, it is only the shareholders who are going to decide whether to continue with this person as an auditor or not. But tell me in 1956 act, the shareholders may reappoint this person as the auditor. But here after tenure gets over, they can't even reappoint him. So they have to now look for Mr. C or Mr. D or some other auditor only. But not Mr. A because Mr. A will be subject to the cooling off period. Are you remember cooling off period? Have you understood or not? I have not still explained you those charts. The charts are pending explanation.